Well, hello to all of you around the world. I want to welcome you to another edition of Soul Liberty Today, broadcasting live from our nation's capital right here in Washington, D.C., and on KMET 1490 AM radio for all of you out on the West Coast. How are you guys today? Um, listen, we have such a very special show. My name is Brian Wesley Johnson. I'm your host for today. But I have another wonderful person to introduce you to. She's my co-host for today, and that is Sheila Applegate. Good morning, Sheila. Hello, Brian. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, how has your week been, my love? Well, I have an interesting little story. Yesterday, oh. I went to visit our friend Melina in mm -hmm. Auburn, and we got caught in a storm. And wow. a giant piece of tree fell onto my car and Melina's sister's car. <laughs> and oh, that my was not goodness. very fun. Oh. Right? But you know what? This is the miracle part. We got both okay. cars out with little to no damage. Is that incredible <laughs> or what? <laughs> so it was kind of a roller coaster, but... <laughs> Are Zach you came in, he went out to yeah Zach went out to get the car because it was downpouring and we only had one umbrella and he came back without the car and a white face and I and showed me this picture and I I thought it was like destroyed but when we actually got out there it was it wasn't it was crazy <laughs> so. that is well okay so it's amazing right and sometimes right that's what I'm feeling blessed <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes we feel as though, oh my God, this is going to be horrible, and da 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 da, da and then tr a tree falls on your car and there's no damage. Talk about a miracle! Right? Wow! Right? That's so amazing. Well, hey, yeah. I know that kind of made you feel good. It did, right? It was one of those like, oh yeah, I feel very protected right now. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 you know, like. Super. <laughs> Um, but the crazy well, part, one last thing, the crazy part is that my friend Melina, who I was visiting, while Zach found this, Melina and I were talking and she was saying it was a two year anniversary of when a giant tree fell on their house, broke through the roof and landed on her husband and they were OK. So oh. <laughs> that just adds to the miracle. Are these rubber right, I'm done with my story. Are they like rubber they are trees not. or something? We just have a lot of <laughs> spiritual protection. <laughs> I love it. That's cool. That's actually really, really cool. Yeah. Um, you know what else is cool? Our hot topic what? for today. Yeah. We are talking about uh, the new business model, uh, which is do what you love. I mean, if you are a person dreaming of starting your own business, or you're an entrepreneur struggling to break out and create success, th t listen, this is the show for you today. You'll probably want to come back and watch this show again. Um, we're talking about uh, this new business model, uh, which is creating both joy and prosperity. And it's really about um, crafting your business about what you love, and how to use that to serve your community. And today, y'all, listen, I have and we have the perfect guest for you uh, to talk to uh, this about. I'm going to introduce you to him right now. Uh, Mooney is a sought after speaker, event producer, coach and business strategist for personal development and spiritual businesses of all shapes and sizes. Now, he started his career working for Tony Robbins. Yes, that Tony Robbins, the recognized authority on psychology of leadership, business strategy, and an advisor to leaders all around the world. And in just two years, Mooney was promoted to the position of main room manager for Tony's international tour of sold out seminars and events. He spent years traveling the globe, working directly with Tony and his team to help millions of people create lasting change in their lives. Now, as a former product launch manager for Hay House Publishing, the largest publisher of mind, body, spirit, and transformational work in the world, he worked with best-selling authors including Louise Hay, Denise Lynn, Cheryl Richardson, Christine Northrup, Neil Donald Walsh, Michael Bernard Beckwith, Michael Dooley, Greg Braden, Anita Morjani, 
Debbie Ford and Yala Van Zandt and more launching products and courses and taking their business strategy to a whole new level. Now, since then, Mooney has dedicated his career to working with entrepreneurs seeking to make a living doing what they love. His true passion and purpose is supporting those who are ready to grow and expand to levels they never thought possible, guiding them through this life-changing process. Now, currently, Mooney continues to advise New York Times best-selling authors on their businesses and marketing strategies while launching his own business, the Mooneyverse. 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 I have to do it that way, Mooney, because you know. So, what with Mooney? I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. I'm so grateful to be here with you. <laughs> what you know? What a life you have had and continue to live, my friend. Well, when you say it all like that, it does make it seem very glamorous. <laughs> but yes, I feel very, very blessed <laughs> to, have, to have had the experiences that I've had. Sometimes it's, it's hard to remember when you're slogging through some things. You're like, wow, I've actually done a lot. But yes, it, it was a, it, and you know, didn't plan any of it. That stuff all kind of <laughs> manifested itself out of thin air. Uh, meant to wow. be in a lot of cases, but yeah, synchronicities abound. Wow! So uh, when people say, "Wow, you are such an overnight success," you kind of, kind of, kind of internally roll your eyes a little bit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it didn't feel like an overnight success as it was happening, but yeah, I guess when you finally get to that breakthrough moment, you're like, "Oh yeah, it just <laughs> happened in the last 24 hours. Great." <laughs> oh man! Listen, I, I, I want to jump right in to this concept of, you know, what I'm calling the new business model, right? Which is doing what you love. My first question to you, because I'm sure that people uh, really want to connect with this specific concept of what is a spiritual entrepreneur? Love this question, love talking about it. It's like one of my favorite things to do. Um, Spiritual entrepreneur is a is a phrase I think that's floating around out there. But to me, it really means somebody who has reached a point in their own personal spiritual journey that they're mm -hmm, ready mm -hmm. to move into another phase of doing what they do so that they can A, lead and inspire other people and B, shift out of the dynamic of, okay, this is just something I do as a hobby into something that I'm starting to pivot into as a career. Uh, and the reason why I think it's such a great buzzword for it is because there is a quote unquote spiritual industry now, and there has been for a long time. And it always seemed like very far away and very distant and like, oh, I could never do what so-and-so does, or I'm not big enough or important enough to do what this other person does. But the reality of it is, is we need these leaders, these teachers and guides at all levels, in all modalities, in all different ways that you can experience spirituality, because there is no rules to how spirituality manifests itself. Uh, for you, it could be crystals. For me, it would be meditation. For somebody else, it could be, you know, dowsing. It could be just spinning around in circles. You know, like there's so many different ways that that we can express this part of ourselves. So there's really no limit on what you can do so that thing that you think is really unique for you that you know i use a, a special blend of of tarot cards and meditation and you know uh pendulums and this and that like that that whole combination of what makes you unique there are lots of people out there that resonate with it more than you realize mm. Mm. i love it i love it i love it i love it i'll go to you sheila because i know you have a question for me <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for being here, Mooney. I'm very happy to have you here with us today. Um, I like what you say about finding what you love and following that passion. Um, there's an added aspect, I think, when we talk about spiritual entrepreneurs, that there's kind of a connotation in our society that one should not market spirituality. Um, how have you been able to sort of bridge that and bring forth this amazing way of supporting people in launching their careers? 
great question. This is one of the things, and hi, Sheila. Um, this is one of the things that I think jams people up when they're doing it is that they think, okay, well, I received these gifts from the universe or from the, you know, creation or whatever you kind of view as the, the, the governing body, if you want to call it that, of, of this experience that we're having. And you're like, well, how could I charge for this? How could I do this? I remember early, early on when I was pivoting out of working in publishing and, and thinking, okay, there's more people out here. I want to help them be able to, to get there faster. And I met this guy who was a uh, Maori from New Zealand, and he had landed in Los Angeles trying to figure out what he was going to do. And he had this very unique style of doing readings where he would tell you about your kind of superhero self and your ultimate mm. self. Uh, and one of the things that came across in many of our conversations was this concept of if you go back far enough, every culture, every civilization, every version of human organization, there has always been the mystic right inside of that, the archetype of the mystic. There's always somebody that you'd go to for the unexplainable. And I'm sure there's if you look at the Venn diagram, like what we now consider medical knowledge was probably eaten up a lot by what would be labeled as the mystic. And this person was mm -hmm. cared for by the community. So it's not like they were out there having a full-time job and being a mystic on the side. Their whole mm -hmm. role in society was to be the mystic and, and the culture took care of them. So whether it was you were being, you cleared somebody's issue and you got a bushel of corn or you cleared somebody's issue and there was some fish involved or there was some sort of barter that happened you know, we don't do that anymore in today's day and age where I'm going to give you a bushel of tomatoes, but we can give you dollars. And so there's an element of like this whole system of getting paid for what you do as a spiritual entrepreneur is already baked in. We just have to remember that it's there and start to kind wow. of get into the, the, the concept or the practice of this has value. And whether or not, uh, you know, everybody believes it, there are people who do believe it. And so those are the ones you're looking to find. Uh, and this is this this concept of spirituality has value is growing because, like I said, there is an industry. The industry is making money. Um, yeah. All of your favorite authors, all of your favorite teachers, everyone who's had a career in a New York Times bestselling book gets this concept. And so for us, as we step into the industry and start to take this on, this mantle of spiritual entrepreneurship, this is maybe one of the biggest steps that you have to make is to remind yourself over and over again uh, that this is a system that's been in place for a really long time. It's okay to charge for your gifts. It's okay to value your gifts. It's okay to make your life about this. Uh, and, and if those components can come into place, everything gets easier because you're not struggling to assign prices. You're not struggling to... Uh, you know, collect payments from somebody. You're not struggling right. to recognize your own value and realize that your time has value so that you yeah. start to change the way you relate to time and how your time is available for your business. So there's a lot of things that are wrapped up in this idea of, can I charge for my services? And I'm here to tell you, and I'm sure lots of other people would tell you that, yes, you are. And in most cases, you're probably not charging enough, but that's a conversation to go into <laughs> at a much deeper <laughs> level. But, but even getting to the point where, and, and I say this all the time, is like there's this concept out there in like traditional marketing. Um, I keep doing flying air quotes, but you can't see me. Traditional marketing that, you know, you got to burn the boats and you got to like get the most that you can and you got to do this, do that. And like it's, it's got to be six figure launches or seven figure business. Uh, you know, that's cool. And if you get there, that's amazing. I think I'm more concerned with helping people get to that first dollar where they yeah. feel good about it. So it's not yeah. even about the amount and see mm -hmm. about the energy and the feeling you have when you charge, you get paid for it. And you're like, wow, I really am worth this. I really am yeah. valued. I really am out there doing my thing and making money, doing what I love. It's really about that first dollar where you can feel really, really good about it. And then it just grows from there. Wow. You know, um, we're going to take a quick break, but I want to continue this conversation around <clears throat> the shifting, right? Because you, we, uh, and I'll do the air quotes for you, the traditional marketing sales and all that <laughs> kind of you. stuff is <laughs> what is what is prevalent, right? But we need to shift away from that into the, a newer model and, and how that reflects on all of our, our all of our economies. Um, an economic model. So I want to ask you about that. We're going to take a quick break, everybody, and we'll be back with 
more of Mooney, who I'm, I'm loving. I'm loving this conversation so much. <laughs> um, we'll be back in about a few minutes. So Liberty Today is brought to you by Happy Travelers Tours and Old Vine Wine Tours. Satana products at our Go shop at go.soliberty.com. Have you ever asked the question, if I was to be anything, what would I be? Regardless of money, regardless of status, beyond popularity, and fame. Living your passion. Feeling your life has purpose. Solivity is a space to nurture that which lives in all of us. A place where work can become play and doing what we love creates the dreams of a lifetime. And we're back with more of Solivity today. We are talking about the new business model. Do what you love with our very special guest, Mooney, business strategist, sought after speaker, just all around great guy and does air quotes just fabulously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you <laughs> laughing over there, Mooney. Um, <laughs> my, <laughs> and this is how we do it, everybody, every day. Mooney, we were talking about these traditional models that are really based in lack, limitation. Um, there's not enough. Completely different from what you and I kind of talk to people about here at Solivity, you with the Mooneyverse. Um, what's really stopping a lot of people or or what's the challenge from people moving from those models into what you're talking about today oh boy uh yeah. so <clears throat> there's a bunch of things but i'll start here because this is i yeah. think the kind of like the top line part of it Inside oh, yeah. all of us, I think when we choose to step into this kind of spiritual spotlight is the way that I refer to it. It's like you're getting out there, you're kicking the door open. You're like, hey, I I do this thing and I do it really well. And it's what I want to make my life about. And I've gotten great results for people. Um, you know, there's this uh, this kind of conflict that happens internally where part of you is like, yeah, this is this is exactly what I'm meant to be doing. And part of you is is kind of resistant to it. So it creates a little bit of internal conflict. And I, I sort of eventually evolved into referring to this as the monk and the marketer, right? These two identities or these two archetypes. And I use those buzzwords because that's what it makes sense for me. Other people can mm. rename it however you want to. But the concept of the monk is like that totally Zen spiritual part of you that would give it all away for free, that would just be out there sharing your gift and being in the flow and like kind of out of your body a little bit. And then there's the kind of like human concerns of marketing with the marketer where it's like, okay, but you got to pay your bills and you got to make money and you got to figure out how you fit into the market and what you can charge that makes sense. And, and you sort of start to push it to the extremes of, you know, the monk wants to give it all away for free. The marketer wants to get as much as, you know, they possibly can. And then th what happens when you, you don't address this conflict. And I think for me, that was a big part of my journey was I had awesome gigs and jobs that paid me tons and tons of money, but, but 
from a spiritual standpoint, they were empty and in some cases damaging. So I had played this game of like taking the monk and taking the marketer and shoving them as far apart as I possibly could and saying, okay, monk, don't listen to the marketer, marketer, don't listen to the monk. And what was happening is I'd go and make a ton of money in the traditional marketing space. And I was like wheeling and dealing and flying all over and doing these things that didn't feel good. But I was also silencing the monk by saying, okay, well, in between all of this stuff, I'm gonna help my friends with their marketing projects, but I'll do it for free. So what I found myself doing is, is I'm burnt out over here on this side doing these big travel gigs. And then I'm also burnt out because I'm literally working for free for people. And you think that's such a, a great way to kind of help and support people. But when it's, you've spent 18 hours on something and then they email you back and you're like, I really don't like it, can we start over? And you're like, okay, this is now entering a territory that I'm uncomfortable with. So little by little by little, as I was pushing these two identities apart, this life just kept happening. And it, it, you know, what do you do when you've got these two things that need to be together, but you're forcing them apart, they slam back together. So you right. have these moments where all of a sudden your world comes crashing together and you're like, okay, I have to figure this out. And so for a lot of people out there, they think that, okay, I'm going to keep my traditional job and I'm going to keep my traditional way of being, and I'm not going to tell anybody about what I do. And then I'll have a website or I'll have a Facebook page, but I won't show my face and I won't say who I am and I won't go on video and I won't go, you know what I mean? Like I'll stay in the shadows, but, and that, and, and, and you get to you trick yourself into thinking that that's okay. Like this is totally normal that I'm going to like right. split my personality into these two things. And that'll be the way that I move forward. And all you do is, you know, start to, it's a strain, right? It's a constant strain to push these two right. things apart. So, and Absolutely. this isn't everybody, this is just the people who are wired to step into this role of being a spiritual entrepreneur. You could very happily be a fan of spirituality and stay that way. You could very happily not be a fan of spirituality and, you know, be here on earth and just delight in earthly pleasures, if that's how you want to put it. Like nobody's mm -hmm. saying you have to, but there are people who have right. that that kind of inner ding. You know, like Louise Hay used to talk about that inner ding. Some of yeah. us have that thing where we're like, okay, I think I'm supposed to be doing this. You know, I keep getting signs right. and synchronicities and messages, or I did a, a reading and it really helped somebody, uh, or I keep hearing and seeing the same messages over and over again you know, that there's something in there in the system that's like making me pay attention to this. That's who I'm mm -hmm. kind of talking about. And there's more of us than I think we realize. So when the monk and the marketer come crashing back together, what ends up happening if you don't do the work is that they're constantly tripping over each other or battling in front of you. And it's so hard <laughs> to move forward because every Absolutely. decision point you've got like on one shoulder and on the other shoulder, the monk is saying like, okay, but how are we going to contribute and, and help people? And they really need it. And we got to give it away. And we have to take all your best stuff and put it out there. And the marketer is like, ah, 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 be careful. You got to get money for that. You got to pay your bills. <laughs> you know, so it's a little bit of like, I, I think a lot about like the old Looney Tunes with the, with like the angel and devil on your shoulder. It's a oh, little yeah. bit like <laughs> that, uh, where it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the kind of through all of this is integrating part of it. And I think this is, you know, Sheila, my work with you as, as I've met you, this has informed a lot of it too. It's like the integration part of this is so important for people to pay attention to that. You can't just kind of smush the monk and the market marketer together and say, okay, you guys get along, but I'm not going to do any work to make that happen. <laughs> it's the work right. that goes into allowing the monk to learn from the marketer, allowing the marketer to learn from the monk, helping them right. dance together so that you can join them and move forward without these limitations. Uh, I can't tell you for how many years I was tripping over this thing of like, I can't charge for this. Oh, but I should charge for this or I need to make money or I want to, I want the significance of being expensive. You know, there were all these things that are rolling around. And, and if you can't get these two archetypes to play nicely together and then be able to align with the purpose of what you want to do, things get real tricky real quickly. Oh, yeah. um, so oh. that would be kind of a, a big, big reason why people don't get themselves aligned with what they want to do in the spiritual you, realm. You know, that makes so much sense. Um, and I think um, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking of the fact that um, I think that that being a spiritual entrepreneur also goes into realms of quote unquote traditional professions where you can mm -hmm. bring spirituality into being a doctor, a lawyer, an architect, 
you know, a, a HVAC technician, whatever it is, you can bring that into it. Um, and that what you're saying around, okay, am I charging too much and all you know, that kind of thing. I see people dealing with that all the time, all the time. Yeah. And um, what you're talking about is yeah. reversing the flow, right? So it's no longer a spiritually based business. It's taking a business and making it more spiritual, which is like Correct. the final frontier. I think that uh, people are, so are, so are, so are <laughs> Oh, man, Sheila, I know you've got a question. Well, I'm just smiling because, um, you know, Mooney, when I first met you and you, you know, I knew that you were a marketer in the spiritual industry, I definitely had my guards up because, you know, there's not a lot of people that are you know, at this level. So it was a joy to get to know you and to see that you were in harmony with, you know, how I've been doing this. Um, I, I don't, I've been in this for 25 years in a spiritual business and I didn't really have the fight. Although when you said dancing, I'm like, oh, they were sure tangoing a lot. My, my marketer and my, um, <laughs> my spiritual side, because, you know, I would go a little bit to one side and try, you know, but my inner knowing just said, you can't do this. And so one of the things that, um, I came to really understand a few years ago that I know you also um, enjoy bringing into marketing is that it should be joyful, you know? So there's that question when I do something, does it, does it bring me joy? And if it brings me joy, do I want to do it again? And if it doesn't bring me joy, then, you know, what do I want to change? So as you now are able to work with people from this perspective, helping people get started, you know, from this knowing of bringing this together and the importance of it. What is some of the parts of it that bring you a lot of joy? Good question. Good question. Ooh, that is a great question. Um, I think that there's this, so when I, part of what I do, and, and we know this just from, it's floating around, but I learned, I picked this up at Tony Robbins is when you're trying to do something that it's, you know, we conflate what needs to happen and we kind of make it bigger than it is. But in reality, what we're trying to do is 80% mindset and 20% mechanics. And we, we blow up the mechanics and think like, well, I'm gonna have to do all this stuff and I have to learn all these things and it's going to overwhelm me, but we don't ever address this kind of inner part of the struggle of, okay, am I willing to be seen? Um, can I mm -hmm. work around my limiting beliefs? Mm -hmm. Can I transform them? Can I do this? So there's like this big journey that happens internally when we do this. And there's a part of it that when I teach, there's, there's this game, it's like spiritual Mad Libs, spiritual identity Mad Libs, where I have everyone kind of come up with this, this phrase where it's, I'm an adjective, adjective, noun, who verbs, right? So I'm trying to like take this big thing that you're trying to explain and trying to make it understandable, but also give you this little affirmation that you can keep using to remind yourself of who you are and what you can do. And every once in a while, not always, but every once in a while when I'm working with somebody, there's this point where they keep trying out different adjectives and adjectives and different nouns and different verb statements, and they'll hit one and you can see it happen when they say it out loud and it, it's true and they start to get really emotional and it's not like a mm. sad emotion. It's like this relief of like, Oh my gosh, I can finally say the words. And when I say them out loud, they're vibrating at the frequency of how I feel. And I've never been able to align these things before and tears start squirting out of my face. And, wow. you know, it's, I have, you know, I, I find this, this pure, it's like, I have a client who refers to it as like sticking your finger in the spiritual light socket, which is a weird <laughs> thing, but like, that's how I, refer, it's like, you finally get a grip, zap, <laughs> zap, you, but you get a, you get a tiny little glimpse of what it's like to have everybody on your team the monk, the marketer, yourself, your guides, yeah. um, you know, all of the limiting beliefs, all of those empowering beliefs, like everything that makes up who we are all of a sudden started vibrating at the same frequency. And it's mm -hmm. a super emotional feeling to have. And I've, I've been, I feel blessed to have witnessed it, you know, at this point, let's say a dozen times, which is, which is mm. lucky for anybody. But the fact that you get to inspire that journey for people to eventually get there. And then you hear about it later, like, 
two months, three months, three weeks, whatever, they'll go on Facebook. I figured it out. I figured out my adjective, adjective, noun, verb. And, and to me, that's like the biggest breakthrough is like, if you can say the words out loud and not only feel them and believe them, but have it feel right, then you've done a huge, huge service to yourself getting to where you want to go faster than you thought you could. Wow. That's amazing. I love it. 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 Listen, guys, we're going to take another quick break, uh, but there's more to come with Mooney. Uh, you know, as you guys were, were talking, I was thinking about um, when I started this, I had that, that fear. You know, here I am, this business develop, development professional, and I have this world over here, and then I, I'm starting this solidity thing. What, what are these people going to think about this stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I had to go through the process of basically, through a dear friend of mine, releasing that through a prayer, which was basically like, the people who are going to be attracted to solivity are only going to come because they're meant to be there. And that, that solivity will serve them. And that people who have a negative connotation will just, will just, they won't even see it. They won't even see it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that I'm leaving it up to the universe to handle that. And to this day, it's never happened. It's still just wow. as wonderful as ever. So just want to offer that to people. And thanks, Mooney, for that, because that is so true. Oh, my gosh. I love the adjective. I'm going to do that right now. Um, anyway, <laughs> listen, we're going to take Mad a Lynn, quick everybody break. Everybody get your paper out. <laughs> I know, right? right? Yeah, that's great. Oh, we're going to take a quick break. We got more with, with our very special guest, Mooney, today. Um, I know you guys are going to come back and, and we watch this later, so we want to make it really good. So we'll be back in just about two minutes. So Livity Today is brought to you by Assume Control Over Your Weight and Broader Health with the 80 Bytes Program by Physical Mind Institute. For 50 years, we've been told, load up your plate with veggies, load them up, because all this spinach, look at it, all the spinach is only 100 calories. But avoid fat because a tiny sliver of butter is also 100 calories. So spinach is good, butter is bad, right? But not today. Now we're told, put butter on everything, even in your coffee. Why? Because fat doesn't spike insulin as carbs do. And stretching the stomach with all those veggies unbalances our digestive hormones. So eat healthy today means fat, fasting, stomach control, right here is the stomach. Forget calories, hormones rule, and 80 bites is the solution. Learn more by going to 80bites.com today. Are you ready to take that first step towards true, unwavering inner happiness? Are you like thousands of people who have everything they need, not want, but need, and still can't seem to find happiness and fulfillment in their lives? If so, the Steps to Happiness show is for you. On my show, you will learn about the principles and practices that lead to true inner happiness. Because guess what? isn't found in our external environment, but within ourselves instead. Together with my guests, we will explore the latest physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being practices. And together, we'll advise you on the actionable steps you can take towards a happier, more fulfilled, authentic life. So I invite you to join me each week on Soul Liberty TV on the Steps to Happiness show with me, Teresa Greco. And we're back with more of Solivity today. We are talking about the new business model. Do what you love. You gotta do it, people. You gotta do it. You gotta do it today. <laughs> and we're talking with our very special guest, Mooney, um, who's a business strategist. I mean, he's worked with Tony Robbins. He's worked with uh, the Hay House Group. I mean, man, you have done it all and keep and just elevating from there so i'm i'm so glad you're here with us today um thank you me too <laughs> uh, oh man you know so much to talk about so i'm going to first say you're coming back notice Sheila. i'm not even asking him now i'm just saying you're coming back we're going to talk <laughs> about this 
Um, <laughs> what advice do you typically can you give to entrepreneurs of all ages? What's like what's like a standard kind of thing that you bring and you say, not just what people are starting out, but even if they've already have a business and they're trying to inject themselves as a spiritual being into it, letting that part of them permeate and come out. I would, uh, a couple of things. And, you know, I, okay. I, I sort of relates to what you were talking about before with this idea. And Sheila, also what you were saying is this kind of concept of beliefs and this concept of the limiting beliefs that we all hold on to and trying to release that or trying to put intention into what we want to create or who we want to attract and, and keep that as like a, a practice, just as much as you balance your books, you got to balance your kind of spiritual books, right? When you're doing this. Um, and, mm -hmm. and I ran into this is that, you know, there's this whole system of, and, and it's not antiquated. It's just like the first step. So I don't want to like stomp on it and say it doesn't, it's not important, but we have this kind of belief system, right? Of here are the things that I believe about myself. Here are the things that I've been led to believe by life. And here are the things that I kind of believe just from my own interpretation of it. And a lot of those things can stop you from even feeling comfortable being vulnerable like this and putting yourself out. So you're right, whether you're a spiritual HVAC company uh, or you're a, a tarot reader, like the, the rules are the same of, of saying, OK, there are things that I have collected over my experience as a human being on Earth uh, or as this big spiritual being having a human experience, which I love that quote, um, <sighs> where I have learned that you know, if I do this, or if I say this, or if I relate to it this way, or if I do that, people aren't going to like it, or they're not going to like me, or they're going to think I'm right. crazy, or they're going to, you know, all these, these thoughts. And so it sort of kind of right. falls into three categories. And, you know, one of them is this kind of paranoid thought of like, if I do this, something bad's going to happen. And so we have this paranoia, right, that that everybody and and I know that that's an extreme term. And everyone kind of mentally, when you think about paranoia, you think about like the guy in the room with the board, with the red string, tying all the pictures together, trying to like come up with a conspiracy <laughs> theory explanation. But paranoia has like multiple levels. Paranoia could be, uh, oh, I'm going to come onto this show today and I might make I might say something dumb by accident. And then it's right. going to ruin my chances for ever having a career because I'll say the wrong thing and then I'll, I'll be canceled and that'll be the end of it. Right. That's right. a paranoid thought of, you know, that worst case scenario is paranoia. Uh, right. And so what we don't ever talk about is the opposite of paranoia, which is pro noia. So in balancing <laughs> oh, our spiritual oh, books wow. in whatever spiritual mm -hmm. thing we want to do, pro noia would say, OK, amazing things could happen. I could totally get in there and not even consciously say this magic combination of words that opens up the, the portal to possibility that I never would have considered. And it will be completely effortless and I won't even be conscious that I'm doing it, but it'll yield this incredible result and it's going to change my life. So if Ooh. you're willing to mm. listen to paranoia, right, if you're willing mm -hmm. to give paranoia that much of a microphone, you have to balance it out with pronoia. And it's a learned skill, right? So it's like going to the gym. It's like learning a new skill. It's any of those things. You have to practice this thing. Every time you catch yourself having a paranoid thought, and we have them all, they're called intrusive thoughts. They happen all yep. the time. It's a yep. part of being human. There's nothing yep. wrong with you. But if you right. can start to catch yourself and push things in the direction of pronoia, just to create balance and cancel out the equation of constantly feeling paranoid or like that something bad's going to happen. If you can balance that out with the pro noia version of it, it creates, again, it's like the joining of the monk and the marketer. It just removes one more layer of what Absolutely. might be stopping you. And it's, it's oh. applicable to everything. Ooh. All right. You, okay. We, well, <laughs> Sheila, we just crossed over into church <laughs> now. We just crossed over. Um, or as they say in South, the chach chach up in here uh <laughs> sheila y'all know you have a question <laughs> well i love that balance and then you know when you bring those into harmony what what power you can have so thank you mm, for that mm, example mm, 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 mm. um 
as we get close to the end of the interview, um, what is it you most want people to know today? Like as the either, you know, there may be people just considering starting out, maybe they're um, already started or far into it, but still struggling. What is it that your heart says, I want to tell you about? Keep going. Keep going <laughs> as you're right thinking before. about it. Uh, yeah. yeah yeah just keep yeah keep going because yeah. right right at the darkest moment is when the breakthrough happens right at the biggest struggle is when you're going to learn the the most important part of it so those breakdowns always signal a breakthrough in my experience and so yeah. when things aren't working or you're throwing your hands up in the air if you can start to kind of plug some of the things we've talked about today into it and be gentle and graceful with yourself to realize that there's a reason why you're getting frustrated. There's a reason why you're having a breakdown. And it's because like things are about to massively change in your perspective or in your capacity for what you mm -hmm. do. Um, that's kind of one half of it. And then the other half is, and, and I say this all the time, and this is kind of like a, 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 a moment for you to really meditate and journal and think about is that somewhere, somehow out there in the universe or in the world, and it's either in our time frame or in the future, that somebody's going to interact with something that you were brave enough to say or something that you felt called to do or that you created mm -hmm. or that you were a part of, and it's going to change their life. Uh, it's going to happen at three o'clock in the morning when they're three hours deep on a YouTube binge and they come across wow. your video talking about your story, your experience, uh, your transformation, your healing, uh, your ability to express the way that you feel about spirit and you feel about what you're called to do and it's going to inspire them to do something it's going to inspire mm. them to pick up the phone and get help it's going to inspire them to change the way that they look at the world or their purpose and their meaning of why they're they're here on earth at this time and we don't get to know that part all the time like we don't get to experience the end result of it but it doesn't mean we shouldn't put it out there so wow. it's that's to me like the the biggest kind of blessing in all of this is releasing the result and just knowing that if you are your your true self and you shine that out as often as you can somewhere somehow it's going to make an impact uh and you will mm -hmm. only get to know about it i guess when you're on the other side back with source but at least in this life you got to express yourself and not repress it and get it out there so that it can be real out here on in, in our kind of human experience mm, 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 that's beautiful mm. wow thank Thank you for I mean, and that's something that I think all of us need to take into account. Mooney. I mean, mm -hmm. um, uh, you, we, you never, ever, ever fully know who you're impacting, especially in this kind of work um, um, where you're on a podcast or you're on TV or you're writing a blog. Um, those who who physically are interacting with people, sometimes you'll get that. But even then, they may take that and that might affect them in a, in a different way with their family and they may or, or a loved one. And you won't know about that. But it's not it doesn't mean that it's not happening. And that again, when you're in your flow, what you what you love, and you're in the flow and you can feel it, that change is happening. That goodness is permeating out in so many different dimensions. Uh, and that we need to acknowledge it. Uh, and just let it be real. Um, don't question it. Just know that that's truth. That's universal truth. Another truth is uh, our gratefulness for you being here. Um, where can people find more information about you? Uh, they can come on over to my website, which is the Mooniverse, T-H-E-M-U-N-I-V-E-R-S-E dot -E com. And they can check out some of the free resources. They can join this amazing Facebook group that I have that's got about, I think it's like 1500 spiritual entrepreneurs. And we're all Ooh. in this safe bubble supporting each other and sharing ideas and concepts. And, you know, sometimes just complaining and commiserating about some of the struggles we're going through, but mostly, and you know, in, in reality, it's just us supporting each other and saying, you're not alone. You're not alone. You can do it. Right. Right. Oh man. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. I'm going to formally ask you this time, would you come back? Would you come back to Solivity today? I would and, love to come back. <laughs> oh man, yeah, the spirit. Maybe maybe you come back. We can do some dishing on on stuff and that kind of deal. But 
on spirituality. I love, yeah, I'll pull back the curtain on the spiritual industry and kind of, you know, <laughs> show everybody what it really looks like back there. <laughs> I love it. I Ooh. love it. Oh, man. Um, so, everyone, listen, Mooney's going to come back and join us on Soul Liberty today. Um, again, Mooney, thank you so much. Check out the Mooneyverse. Uh, it is really an incredible site, Mooney. Um, uh, it just feels welcome. Yeah. And it, it's just open. And I think people will really, really, really enjoy uh, communing with you at that site. So thank you for being here. Um, and I guess we'll see you soon, huh? Sounds good to me. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mooney. Listen, every, yeah. Listen, everybody, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back with more of so Liberty today. Hi there, Sheila Applegate here with some exciting news. I've joined the incredible Soul Liberty team as the host of the new Consciously Awesome live show, where I will be sharing insights to help you discover your full brilliance and claim the vibrant life you deserve. So tune in every Wednesday right here on Soul Liberty TV to join the fun and remember to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss a single episode. Have an awesome week and I will see you on Wednesday. Six years ago when I started Soul Liberty, my vision was to support everyone in improving their life through the discovery of their passion and purpose so they could become the best version of themselves to battle fear and ignorance and create a better world today. Get inspired to live your passion and purpose. Visit Solivity.com now. Woo, what a show, what a show, what a show, what a show. Um, just want to say thank you to Mooney again for joining us today. Uh, Sheila, he's incredible. He's just an incredible yes, show. I agree. <laughs> oh man. Um, he is amazing. Um, glad that he's going to come back and join us because there's, this is something that we can really dive deep into and really talk about. Um, uh, because the, 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 the paradigm of entrepreneurship is so focused traditionally on you making money and then making money um, uh, magically, right? Like, like you don't have any experiences and that kind of thing. And if you're not a success, immediately you're 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 a failure, and you should just give it up. And that's not the reality with with businesses, and especially not businesses that are transforming your life. Right. I think everything that Mooney said translates into any authentic business and absolutely. don't we hope that most businesses are authentic uh, absolutely right um speaking of authenticity uh why don't we move into our solivity shameless plugs 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 <laughs> um sheila you've got some wonderful things that you're doing uh in the community um something that's coming up actually uh today which okay. is yes. the matrix of illumination. Can you tell people about that? Yes. Yep. It's right here on Aspire. And um, this is a monthly event that I do, but this is the most special one because it's August 8th, which is the eighth month at, on the eighth day and it's at 8 p.m eastern time <laughs> and it's right. the lion's gate so i'm going to do a guided meditation and a channeled message message for the people who um join me and it always has to do and especially today with how our world is changing and um what we need to know right now to be in harmony with it so that's exciting. Go to aspire.solivity.com and sign and up. Always, and there is always a replay. Yeah, and it's it's unlimited. So if you sign up, you can watch it as many times as you want. Uh, and then uh, coming up this Saturday. This Saturday, we have a fractal illumination. And if you're listening Ooh. because you know Mooney, go ahead and ask him what he thinks of fractal illumination because he's got a <laughs> great way of describing it. Uh, <laughs> but this is also to help us um, 
harmonize with the changing world. You know, there's so much going on in our world right now and the energy is increasing. And so this is a time you can sit back, receive, and we will um, use our energy activations to help you harmonize with the world to make things smoother for you. And you mm. can join us um, in person in Marcellus or you can receive the energy long distance. So SheilaApplegate.com to register for that. And as always, you have your soul connection sessions as well. I do. This is my one-on-one -on -one session with you. They are designed directly to what your needs are. So I'm a spiritual channel uh, reader and a coach and we and meditation leader. So we can kind of combine all of my skills to help you with what you want. So if you're looking for a straight out reading, or if you want some coaching, some understanding of where to go next or integration, just reach out to SheilaEffelgate.com. Use the code SOUL23 as a Solivity listener. You'll get $44 off your first session. Woo -woo. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> I want to remind everybody to come visit us on our social media. Um, and our landing page for Soul Liberty Today. You can go to soulliberty.com forward slash Soul Liberty Today. You can learn more about uh, all of our shows. You can watch them. You can listen to them. Also, more importantly, you can learn about our partners like Old Wine Vine Tours and 88 Bites. Um, their, their products and services are amazing. You will not be disappointed. Also, we want you to remind you to go check out our new and approved uh, Solivity website. The Solivity new Solivity.com is here for your pleasure and your, for your inspiration. Uh, so much information is there. Um, uh, just want to remind you to go, go visit those today. Um, Sheila, we're running out of time. We've got to go. <laughs> Can't believe it. It's already that time already. Um, thank you to you. Sheila, um, uh, always appreciate you being here with me. Um, it's just magical sometimes when we have these guests that are putting forth uh, light and love uh, and helping change the world for, for us to have a better world uh, and everybody having a better life too on top of that. Uh, so it's amazing. Right. Uh, listen, uh, on behalf of all of us, I just want to say thank you to you for joining us for this edition of Soul Liberty Today. Of course, we wish we hope that you come back and join us every 8 a.m. and every weekday at uh, Soul Liberty TV for all of you here on the East Coast. But for all of you out on the West Coast, you can also listen to us and watch us at 8 a.m. Pacific Time on KMET 1490 a.m. radio uh, in Southern California. So with that, I want to say thank you for joining us today. And guess what? We'll see you next time. But until then, keep living your life with passion and purpose and create a, your best life today. We'll see you next time.